Just looking over here is just absolutely amazing over this valley. And you can just see the map of the events that took place before and during the Passion. Down here is where they think the real Garden of Gethsemane, this whole area, I believe. This is amazing here. That's what he said, you know, Jesus would have gone to the place that was further down away from the, where the people were wor working in the orchard. Uh, that's the direction where Caiaphas's house is. There's ruins there. And also there's an underground cave system, like a dungeon, which they discovered alongside that. And these steps are 2,000 years old. This site is the most authentic site of all of Jerusalem that they know for sure. The Jews are convinced. And this is the steps going up that Jesus would have come down with his disciples late at night past the house of Caiaphas. I bet they didn't say a word when they went by. That's 2,000 years old steps. I'm here today with this House of Caiaphas archaeological site, a very likely candidate for the place where Jesus was brought after he was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and brought to Caiaphas' house with this persecution that he endured. And this is, of course, also the place where Peter would deny him. I've heard a lot of roosters crowing here. It's um. You know, with all of these things, when we're doing this research and we see these archaeological, historical sites of the Bible, every time you see, like, organic evidences that uh, f totally fit in line with the natural world and what's going on in the culture and the area, the locals, the weather systems, all of these things that only flesh out God's Word, nothing takes away from it. And that's, that's why we know it's the truth absolute truth that we can trust God's Word we can trust the Bible because they are historical accounts and these events really did happen there's the Mount of Olives over there so you can see where everything is in relation to each other there's the Dome of the Rock you can see the golden the golden dome through the trees there that's where the temple would have been so you can see it's very close. Everything is in close proximity. Let's go and explore the dungeons and the caves where Jesus was led when he was arrested just by Caiaphas' house. All things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. So unbelievable. They spit upon him. They pulled out his hair. They beat him with the fists before it even went to the Romans. Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? Then all the disciples forsook him and fled, and they that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas. They would have shackled a man like this. They also could shackle him with the arms stretched out this way, and then the vinegar to make the sting even more. I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. You hereafter shall you see the Son of Man, sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. This is this underground prison, right near to Caiaphas' house, the place where our Lord was brought, underground here, in secret and scourged and whipped. <sighs> Father God, what a moment, what a place, what a memory, what a challenge, what a direction, what a new hope, what a new meaning for our lives. We want to savor it all. And I'm praying that when we think of some deviation that we, our mind will be immediately brought back to this place in the suffering of Jesus and that it will make us rethink 
why we're doing what we're doing so that we will be more loyal to you, more many times, in fact, bring you into our lives so central that we would never think of doing something that you would have to had died for. So I pray that you will bless us with this meaning, this inspiration, this newness of the pit to which he went uh, in both suffering and punishment in order for us to have eternal life. It was your own people and the chief priests who handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jewish authorities. My kingdom does not belong here. Are you a king then? You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this one purpose, to speak about the truth. Whoever belongs to the truth listens to me. My soul is surfeited with troubles. You have plunged me into the bottom of the pit. Upon me your wrath lies heavy. I am imprisoned and cannot escape. Let my prayer come before you. Incline your ear to my call for help, for my soul is surfeited with troubles and my life draws near to the netherworld. I am numbered with those who go down into the pit. I am a man without strength. My couch is among the dead, like the slain who lie in the grave, whom you remember no longer, who are cut off from your care. You have plunged me into the bottom of the pit, into the dark abyss, Upon me your wrath lies heavy, and with all your billows you overwhelm me. You have taken my friends away from me. You have made me an abomination to them. I am imprisoned, and I cannot escape. My eyes have grown dim through affliction. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Do they declare your kindness in the grave, your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known in the darkness, or your justice in the land of oblivion? But I, O Lord, I cry out to you. With my morning prayer I wait upon you. Why, O Lord, do you reject me? Why hide me from your face? I am afflicted and in agony from my youth. I am dazed with the burden of your dread. Your furies have swept over me. Your terrors have cut me off. They encompass me like water all the day. On all sides they close in upon me. Companion and neighbour you have taken from me. My only friend is darkness. Wow, incredible words from Psalm 88. What he went through for us is beyond compare. All of these prophecies and these scriptures were speaking of the suffering that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, would have to endure. It's interesting, it talks there about with my morning prayer, I will wait upon you. Because remember, this is the time that was late into, into the night. After the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus was praying in the garden, um, and they, he got arrested and brought here. So by the time, that time, it was getting very, very deep into the night. And of course, with the morning, the rooster would crow. Just amazing. This is the area where Peter denied Jesus. So right here is a courtyard, and it's a courtyard right beside a road that archeologist tells us goes back to the first century. And as Peter was beneath in the palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, and thou also wast with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand I what thou sayest. And he went out into the porch, and the cock crew. And a maid saw him again, 
and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he began to curse and to swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew. Peter so feared the disapproval of men that he denied the Lord in front of little girls, little maidens. He didn't want to be thought badly of or disapproved of among these people. And Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him, Before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept bitterly. These are not just words in a book, my friends. This is history we're dealing with. And we have to make the decision whether to accept or reject the Messiah who fulfilled all of the prophecies of God's word. Listen to that. There's the rooster. It's all very real, my friends. He really did suffer for us. And the apostles really did suffer for him. What's written down in the, in the Bible, in the Old and New Testament, is the truth. These things really happened. These, re these things really did occur. It's history. I know they didn't teach us it in school, but it's history. And so that means that the, these things really did happen. And if they really did happen, what's our response to them? Do we accept or do we reject God himself who came to this earth in the form of a man and fulfilled all of these scriptures and died on the cross as the Messiah, do we accept or do we reject? How is this relevant for us today? If these claims of what Jesus said were true, then this is the only thing that truly matters, is that the light came into the darkness to save that which was lost. That he paid uh, the price for our souls. What happens if we reject that light? We remain in darkness. And we remain under the condemnation of what he paid for. We remain in the condemnation for our sin. In him we have life and peace and joy. The grace of God is upon us, no longer his judgment, but his grace. We have done many things wrong. And that's why Jesus came to this earth and suffered in our place. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness for our sins. Thank you for enduring all of the suffering, uh, for losing your friends, as it said in that passage, for giving up everything, for feeling alone, for feeling abandoned for our sake, that we know that in you we have confidence that everything that we face in this life you have faced and you have overcome for our sake. You have overcome sin, you have overcome death, you have overcome ab abandonment and that we may find our true identity in you. I, I know that there's so many people in this world, including myself, who have been through identity issues, discovering who we are, you know, being told we're this and that by the media, that we're only valuable if we look like this or if we act like that. 
And that is not the truth, that our true identity is found in you, Jesus Christ, Son of God, the Messiah. Father, Son and Holy Ghost, thank you, God, for your sacrifice for our sins, for paying what we owed. We know that we are safe in your loving and eternal arms, that your word is truth, it's provable truth, actually, but that we have faith that you are who you said you are, uh, that you are the Messiah, that the shedding of blood was the forgiveness of our sins, that you endured it to the end and fulfilled everything you came to do because you love us so much. Thank you, Jesus. In your name I pray, amen. Here's the gospel that you must preserve. Here's the gospel that you must proclaim. And oh, by the way, let it sink deep in you because as you preserve it and as you proclaim it, suffering will come your way. And the only way that you will endure it is by the power of God, through the power of God, as this gospel saturates your whole life. That's the heart of discipleship. And so what is desperately needed in our age, as in the apostolic age, is those who will preserve and proclaim the gospel and in turn endure the suffering that will come inevitably as a result of doing so. And we must not settle for anything less because the stakes are far too high.